Hello, hello, Hera. <laughs> I'll, I'll edit it. That's great, though. I love it. And look at, uh, oh, duh, you can't see because we're on a phone call. You'll see on my wall, I have the celestial like wall hanging, and it uh, it represents Virgo, the sign of Virgo, but I swear to God, the, the artist made it look like it's Hera. You'll see what I mean. So anyway, I'll start it off because I know you said 3 o'clock, right? You want me? I'll wrap it up before, way before, but I know you have to go to work, so I don't want to like, just tell me whenever, and then we'll cut it off. But I'm so, so happy. So Welcome to your first debut, Hera, our special guest on Healing Elements channel. This is definitely just a, I think I'm going to call this series 21 questions, and I'm really curious to get a lot of different perspectives on random questions that often come up, for sure, for me, for other people in the spiritual community. So, um, welcome to Healing Elements. I am definitely glad and proud to call you a friend. It's been lovely to get to know you personally, but these are questions that definitely um, we want to just say, I want to say that this is not from a pers you know perspective that is professional. This is just our food for thought, our perspective. At least that's how I mean to ask the question. So, we're not trying to, I'm not trying to teach anything that is set in stone. I think it's good to get other people's perspectives. So, um, I know I gave you some sample questions. I'll start randomly with, okay, so Hera, do you, do you believe, I guess, first of all, in a heavenly realm uh, for an afterlife, an ascension into a place that is, so to speak, more pleasurable, more positive? Um, and if you do or do not, do you believe in a uh, afterlife at all and also do you believe if there is a heaven that there is a uh, place of either purgatory or punishment that would be considered quote unquote a hell so to speak so that is actually a very interesting question if you asked me that question a couple years ago when I was living at home and being raised with my overly religious parents um, and hypocrit hypocritical parents what religion well. do you mind telling everybody what religion um yeah I guess um Hinduism Okay. Um, is there a specific I, type of Hinduism? Like, is there sections? Like, you know, we have like Presbyterian or Catholic, all these different type of uh, followers of Jesus. Is there different kind of um, sects? Um, not that I know of. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just we also have a lot of uh, quote unquote spiritual leaders. Really, we um, uh, I guess roughly English translation in, into it. Um, uh, but in my opinion, from what I've seen, a lot of them. A lot of fakes and shams and a lot of people kind of just take on the title very quickly even yeah. though there's so much respect and significance behind the name i agree yeah that's a good um, point man i see them on youtube yes so i guess to answer your question now um i don't know that i would say there is specific like a heaven or hell thing um okay. but um i guess maybe <laughs> a form of afterlife i guess where yeah how, how do you mind if i ask you how did it change from compared to when you lived at home have a whole bunch of maybe like me a spiritual experiences happen to give you kind of more of an open mind or um yeah just like a getting in touch with my spirituality again and just life situations and over time growing up and trying to navigate life through my own perspective and yes to figure out a lot of things myself yeah um, that's what i recommend man for all of us you know you get stuck like you said with some of those gurus you get stuck in this pitfall of believing just what they are telling you to believe almost like program religion which is what i mean i hope a lot of people are trying to steer clear from at least the kind that is dogmatic and um you know forceful you know yeah um i don't know i just yeah i think mostly because of that I'm still unsure about a lot of things, but I think at this point, I would say, um, in a sense, I think there is an afterlife of sort that our spirit goes through, um, probably have to take a long road to get there and <laughs> yes, yes. get our own... A lot of know. cleansing and healing, right? That's what I imagine. That's what I am guided, you know, about. I feel like it's just like a hospital, but for our spirit, as if... We have to go over there and based on what we maybe have done in this lifetime they're gonna of course you know show us but i, I feel that they are also would be counselors of some sort i know that that is is really uh tangible to think about but in a way i don't know how it works exactly but i feel like that may be what um there is i don't know that is very that is very beautiful and eloquently answered and do you on that note pre-birth so pre-birth do you believe in um a quote-unquote soul plan or a soul contract or an absolute like a blueprint for your life path um that you you know 
have in front in your subconscious or you know underlying in which everything is predetermined like everything is destiny or do you believe everything is absolute free will or do you believe it's like a combination of both what is your feeling about quote unquote you know soul contracts um actually you made a pretty good point just um with the last question that i answered um yeah i think you know um the earth realm is i completely agree with you on that one it's the toughest realm that the spirit ever goes through right? so there's no there's no way that you know you do all these things in this in this part of your life and then you go on to you know the afterlife and you travel through to the afterlife where you finally are at peace there's no way you get to you have to um come back to this level <laughs> like not not confront some of the things that oh. you know, because i think then otherwise you what's the point right yeah like all the all the stuff that you've done the guilt and whatever you might have underlying it just, it just never goes away true um, yeah yeah and it's like how are you going to get peace then even yeah. even after you pass the earth realm and you still have Very the true. burden of grief on you yeah you still have that um, you know soul memory or whatever we want to label it as that's very that's that's totally true that's why i kind of envision this cleansing happening however that happens you know um interesting so yeah. about about any kind of destiny or or free will yeah. do you think it's a combination or which do you lean toward or do you um i mean personally i i don't I used to not believe that at all, and yeah. I think that you know people are born into this world with a pre pre plan in their mind. But yeah. I think I'm slowly starting to see it with some people. That's what happened to me. Um, yeah, like correlations, yeah. like the spider web and things like that that reverberate, and you can see what connects to what. Is that what you mean in that regard? Yeah, just like seeing um, now, and I don't know. It's just weird way to explain it how do i put it especially with some of the younger kids um me being uh, yes. the older one and them growing up i see them through a certain different light and interesting um i guess you could say like i think some people yes okay. they um they're meant to be someone or be somewhere they're meant to go through a certain part of they have life, a mission whatever okay the reason that may be maybe it's because of whatever they've done in the past okay maybe yep. it's because you know, it's a situation like mine where, you know, you've been through some tough shit, but yeah. that tough shit will in turn um, grow you and shape you into who you are, yes. but along the way, it's supposed to teach you some lessons and it's supposed to help you grow, so. Yeah. that gave me the chills. <clears throat> I totally, in my throat chakra, I totally resonate with that. I think that all of that is a complete probability, not just possibility. Okay, how about, this is interesting. I know we were talking about this and I wanted to lead off on the little sign. Um, you guys, I saw a beautiful little so beautiful little baby lizard and i was thinking that um that symbolized i'm doing the spirit animals you know i'm all into that and i think that it symbolizes because they shed skin that you know we are i think maybe newborn to this level because like i agree 100 percent. this is you can call it the matrix you can call it a physical existence a life path on this earth plane but it is extremely difficult i believe in um you know crazy concepts like there are planets and existence and dimensions that do not have murder they don't have any negativity and i don't know how you know that works but that's just what i'm given and channeled i am wondering about our subject we kind of touched about which is so profound right now it's having to do with my scorpio daughter she's doing a a dream journal uh project for psych class and then we've been talking a lot about dreams you and i so um what is if you can think of one or two what is the most profound dream that has just left an impact or some sort of reoccurring dream if you have one or a dream that is actually a precognition to anything anything like that um huh, funny story about that actually i just remember something else um yeah go ahead you can talk after, yeah regarding the afterlife you mentioned of if people who done wrong are going to be punished yes. i absolutely believe so you do I, you absolutely I, yeah I okay do because then, there's no way in hell. There's no, absolutely no way. Some of, some of the people... Like Hitler. Especially, yeah, especially if you think about some of the, you know, people who've done really, really terrible shit. Yeah. Like news. Like say, serial killer. Yeah, like... The fa famous director who, you know, was like, yep. kind of started the whole Me Too movement. Yes. And Jeffrey, Jeffrey Epstein. Wein yeah, Epstein and Weinstein, all those perverts, I'm telling you. you so yeah. you, do you think that it is an actual hell? Yeah. Like they, yeah, they describe it? In a sense, yes. Okay. Um, I mean... You know, like fire and brimstone and demons I, 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 and torture. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm personally like not a very easily forgiving person, so I mean, I <laughs> yeah. who do shit like that, and I, I 
if it were up to me, like it's I, like an eye for an eye. I wouldn't right? be like a very good role model yeah. or a fake or really. But if it were up to me and I see people who pull that shit, I would put them through eternal damnation. <laughs> we should mention Hera is a Capricorn, and I validate that because my mother's Virgo Earth sign, and Aaron is a Capricorn too. That is very indicative of the people that I've grown up with as Earth signs, and I respect that, and I always try to gravitate a little toward that because I'm too much on the other side, you know, like oh, take advantage I, of me, I'm forgiving, yeah, you know. I mean, for me, a part of it also is just about treating people right and True. like i don't give a shit if you have your own issues going on you work through it you don't you don't treat you just don't pre- treat people like that and the yeah. things that you know, the people have done really is just what about this trippy one though what about people who do involuntary manslaughter like i had a girlfriend that she was not drunk or anything she accidentally uh hit a little kid just ran out in front of her car and was sad it was in our uh kids kindergarten class so it was a very big deal she went to jail for involuntary manslaughter and it was a total travesty because she was wrecked her family was wrecked the other family what about people who do things and do cost you know tragedies but it is not in anything they deliberately did that's a but tough think, question right <laughs> it's a tough question but i think when you're how should i put this i think maybe the universe or whatever it is you believe in might see your intention behind it regardless of what uh, you're doing boom. if they yep. see that you know you obviously you didn't mean to actually you know murder a fucking child and it was yes. by complete accident i think that deserves dude i love uh, your perspective as as it sounds a level of compassion and yeah. forgiveness I mean, you know what you are so i gotta have you on lots of times look at you know what you said which i think is so i got the chills is so pivotal and rings true for a lot of these things is you said the word intention i think truly it matters the intention behind an act now i'm not saying you know you go and do whatever and if you have good intentions but in a way that does uh ring true to me i think that you know whatever you believe in your deity your higher power the universe source i think there is an understanding because they always are in your conscious at all times i, I believe you know um, in that regard, I guess I should ask, I know we're jumping everywhere, but about a life review. Do you believe that we will have that quintessential moment when we maybe ascend, if we do, and we see our life, like they say, in a belief in an eye, or like the near-death experiencers, you know, testify to? Um, yeah. What do I you think that's the manifestation that's... of our brain, or the people that are, you know, reporting this kind of stuff? Uh, in a way, I would think so. I mean, maybe not even on a spiritual level, I can say, like, slowly as I'm growing up, a big example really is just, um, I think everyone kind of goes through on some level, is you do a lot of dumb shit when you're young, and then... <laughs> yes, oh yes. When you, when you grow up, and as you're g- growing up, you learn to kind of have a little bit more understanding and compassion towards your younger self a lot, and... Very true see yourself from a different perspective and I guess that's where the compassion and empathy comes from but I guess the toughest part with that comes also is learning to forgive yourself Uh, and so so, which is something I guess I'm probably going to be dealing with for a really long time considering I don't even forgive people that Uh, that is in true Capricorn fashion (laughs) yes you are so wise and I think that's beautiful you can admit that shit though because a lot of people don't ever admit that they even have anything to forgive I'm gonna be real so I think that you're right I think that it's one of those things that we have to digest you know you with your water sign placements is that yeah you know what this is a work this is like all about this physical right here this earth this level is so much work like that it's hard work so yes I definitely think every time that I have forgiven myself for everything and then you'll have whatever you want to call it a mini dark night of the soul or you have this realization that you have to process it really quick or for a while so yeah and I think that it's it's saying a lot that you're saying right now uh that's beautifully put because you know I I agree with that because you know um and also of course as you probably might have learned yourself too any one of us who've gone through any sort of spiritual growth really I don't know how to describe it there's this like amazing level of just awareness and understanding yes. and connection with you and mainly the universe yes. and completely see things from an absolute different like yeah. ascending higher level point of view so it, it really is in a way kind yeah. of like you're at the top of this entire universe and you're looking down at everything and it just it's, clicks with you and yes. it makes sense realizations so, and that's the yeah. good part right when you're yeah. going through those little things of unforgiving yourself you get those epiphanies of whoa wet wait wait i am forgiven or you know what i mean you you i can't put yeah. it into words but yes yes and i think that's the that's the 
that's the like the sugar and salt of this whole thing, right? You get like that whole, um, you know, existential crisis type of moment where you're like, what did I just see? You know, what what did I just witness or feel? And then you have those other moments where it's just you kind of completely gravitate to the position and you feel comfortable. You know what I mean? And you feel like, OK, you know, I get this. I get this lesson. These were all for a reason, that kind of thing. So I totally dig your answers. It's like really um, intriguing to me. So what about, okay, uh, what about the dreams thing that you were going to say? About have you ever had any dreams that were profound or cognitive oh. or? Um, I'd like to think, what's the word, clairvoyant? Yes. The, the running joke that I have is I kind of see the future a little bit sometimes. Do you do that without dreams? Because that's how it works for me. Like it'll just kind of, I call it a download. I borrowed that from like five years ago yeah. from what I was hearing. Yeah, yeah. No. There are literally people that I've dreamt about years ahead yep. before actually meeting them and then I meet them Same. and it becomes like this deja vu thing. Same. Yep. So, um, and some, sometimes it, it's even just situations and yep. I think I kind of even want to say I dreamt of my like Taurus X, the yes. narcissistic one, the first narcissistic okay. like I've ever had. I've dreamt of him. I think that's that's who he was, and I've dreamt of a certain situation. So I guess in a way, that's a trip. That dream was already like, you know, warning me. And I, I do believe that your dreams sometimes give you a certain deeper message, right? Whether right. it be a warning or something. But you yes. know, usually I don't know. I don't think very many people pay attention to dreams because they think, oh well. Uh, I it's just, just psychological. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, though, on that so much. I mean, I don't just uh, probable. I don't think that's probable. I think that is my truth because I've had, just like you said, I mean, I'm talking about people who, what? And then I, you meet and you're just like, wait, wait a second. It's just so profound. You cannot deny it. So that is intriguing to me. That is intriguing. And also, I wanted to tell you on, on that note regarding you being so dead on sensitive. Sometimes it just amazes me. I'll be doing something and then you'll hit me up with the text or something like that. And it will be not just correlated in a little package with the bow on it. It'll be so pre, you know, it's just, it is clairvoyant. It is knowing it is channeling. It is, you know, intuitive. It's, it's very, very deep with you. And I, I love that. I think, um, that's amazing. Okay. So that, that is something we should probably do like a whole episode on because yeah, I had a reoccurring dream of a plane crash, uh, me getting into it with um, my husband, and sure enough, on our honeymoon, we got into a plane. It was emergency landing, but we we it was a plane crash. He didn't get the wheels down until the very end. We had to be like foamed off, and then, you know, the whole emergency thing. It was petrifying. And then after that, my point is, I never had that dream again. So it was, and it was sad when you said plane crash. Really, I thought of Alea. Oh my gosh, you know that that affected me so much, and because. Oh, I love her, her. Her experience just breaks my heart every time. I love um, her. You know, also a fellow Capricorn. Do you, oh, is she really? Had a fear of flying specifically. No way. I read somewhere that she did not want to go on the plane. Oh, I think, oh my Because gosh. of her fear, fear of flying. Dude, and I have the chills. I think her team or management or someone kind of pressured into doing it because she had to do this video shoot. Oh my god. And they were just like, yeah, let's just get it over with. And, and they they made too much weight on the plane, right? They overloaded it. I, I don't, I think so. Like, there was some shady shit going on. I think yeah. the part of the issue was also just the baggage weight was yeah. um, over the limit. Yep, yep. That's um, what I remember. Yeah, I, she was, uh, That is so sad. And you know what, girl? I'm thanking you for telling me that because... She's fucking gone too soon. That's, way that's too not, soon. It's not fair what they did to her. Not at all. And you know what is crazy is that... I did not know she was Capricorn first. I did not know that she had a uh, ill feeling. And um, part, more of the story to that dream that I had is that right before the flight, I never, ever have gotten before the state a migraine, quote unquote. I was crying in the line, shaking. And the only thing I could say at that time, because I was like, what, 21, 22? Um, I said to Erin, I have a migraine to the point where the stewardess is not supposed to give you an aspirin. She came and gave me an Advil. And <clears throat> she's like, what's wrong? Are you, you, you're not like nervous, are you? I go, no, no. I'm not nervous, but, but secretly... I knew, and Aaron knew, that I had had that reoccurring dream over and over. So it was just, it was profound when I got into that situation and exactly what the, you know, everything that was going down was my dream. So that's why I kind of particularly wanted to ask that and you just, I'm definitely yeah. glad you brought Aaliyah up. Sometimes I think when you have that, like, gut instinct towards something. Yep. He did. Um, or he, even just like, yeah, of course, she fucking didn't want to get off the plane because she got her fear of flying. Poor thing, baby. Oh my God, um, she burned up, dude. Yeah. Oh, so I wonder bad. what she's doing in the afterlife to support or deny uh, R. Kelly's whole abuse. That's a totally different subject, but it was so weird. I just found out about she, that. Actually, you know what, though? Um, interesting things, if you guys want to check it out, 
there is a video on YouTube. I forgot the guy's name, but he has a voice box and Ooh. Um, if I remember it, I will let you know. So yeah, you afford it. The For sure. Um, so he does a, a audio session with Alea. Oh, is it um Craig McMahon? Uh, is it the gentleman that does like life after life stories? He has this like little spirit box, right? You mean spirit box or no? Yeah. Okay. Box, yeah. <clears throat> Ooh, it gives so me the one, chills. One of his videos, I'll have to okay. confirm the username. One yes. of his videos, um, Alea comes through and I guess you can say she, it's a her because of her Capricorn nature that comes through with her personality. Did you get that feeling? Yeah. When she, goes, okay. when she just goes, I think she said at one point, pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> That's Capricorn. Actually, I mean, I'm a Capricorn. Yeah. yeah. I've already given you that kind of like similar tone of message before. Yeah, so. for sure. For sure. Like um, the so, instructor, yeah, you're like... Thing, like. That's how they knew it was Aleo because her personality came through and yeah. yeah we get like that <laughs> okay so true so true okay so this like, is a tool it snappy and it's like hello did uh, i not just say this like two seconds ago right can you like, fucking pay attention can you, you follow said? along right. your, with the instructor right i just love that i don't know maybe it's my capricorn moon but you know i like love on those capricorn i swear to god i have like an obsession okay so this is a totally d different one but a very common question but i'm wondering because it was beautiful that you picked um, this beautiful name Hera or whatnot. I'm saying uh, to you, do you believe in reincarnation and in specific in this lifetime, have you ever been, uh, you know, fascinated or obsessed or just drawn to a specific culture that is not one of which you are associated in this life? Like any kind of past civilizations or are you affiliated with, you know, you think about Atlantis or maybe, I don't know, um, Egypt or Renaissance. Are you involved in, in your own headspace and conscious gravitated toward another uh, culture or time period? Oh, God, I love this question, actually. Awesome, um, awesome. Even though I've strayed away from my religion and, you know, I'm focusing more on my spirituality instead because that's my home and it's where I feel most connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would say, Much you respect. know, I actually still, still, still do believe in reincarnation. I the do. The running joke that I have is I was probably... <sighs> so funny because i think it's also partly because okay. i'm a, a tomboy also so, yeah but oh i think we've been men in past lives if that's what you're saying um yeah i know the main joke i have is actually that i was probably some like rich prince in the past <laughs> who, a guy specifically yeah. obviously yeah. um you know who you know wasn't the best person ever massive douchebag okay you know? probably like hurt a lot of girls a lot yeah. of drugs and drinking didn't live the perfect life but yeah. had all this riches and money spoiled so, maybe yeah okay and the universe went you know what you fucked up <laughs> here's so, this we're gonna have you be as a girl yeah and you're and gonna see. see from yes. a different perspective on how you being a douchebag affects girls and so yeah. as a girl that's going to be your karma yes I mean, that's the running joke that i have with no. myself and then probably a guy in my past life because also how like i don't know like dominant and i guess masculine yeah. i can be yeah even capricorn but, saturn and all that's got you know masculine yeah, energy so that, that's that's capricorn energy yeah. they tend to be, i love that you said that the women tend to be like the more dominant masculine one <laughs> yeah you know that there's this show about past life and they do a regression and it's so trippy because he goes through this whole process and he says now look down and they are always shocked when they're a different sex they go the guy goes what are you a man or woman they're all oh, Oh, weird. I'm a boy. <laughs> it's like a trip because it's so natural because they're totally hypnotized. So it's just yeah, intriguing okay. that you said that. I, I do get girly, but honestly, I just always feel like I connect yeah. all the guys. Connect, I mean, yes, yes, I, yes. The, the, the energy. Weird, like, like yeah. I don't know, it's weird. Like, I'm a girl. I'm supposed to say I'm a girl, so yeah. that's who I am. But I don't know. I feel like I'm more connected to, like, that's cool. That's probably definitely probably a guy my that's cool life. that's cool i think it's it's cool as a spirit too i think that that's why you're such an old soul also is that you can talk about those different energies you know divine masculine and divine feminine which without dividing it and making it some big thing it's like it's okay to gravitate toward whatever energy that you're feeling i think that they're both equal like you know what i mean and so that's totally up my alley too i feel the same way but like also though i think it's also because i tend to attract a lot of not dominant like but male energy yeah. Um, as part of your karmic process to teach you a lesson as well, like we were saying, um, or in terms of spirits, actually. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, like fathers, like grandpas, that okay. sort of like vibe and energy. It's always just male energy, and I, I strong. Kind like of, I'm convinced. Yeah, like I'm convinced that positive or negative, I don't know. I'm convinced yeah. that it's because I, I have. I Capricorns tend to have like a, you know very 
dominant masculine energy. Yes. I figured, I don't know, maybe that's that's what's um, part of it. I think. Guys. Yeah, I think that is part of the element of equation for sure. I mean, um, that is another subject. I love that you are just you're very very wise and you're very up to speed on i love i can talk to you like it's german to other people when we talk about astrology when i talk to you it's dead on you have such a natural gift for that so in astrology do you find any of your placements more specific i know i think i would answer for you uh but i know that you you know you shared your placements and i feel like you are kind of like me i'm pisces sun and capricorn moon and then i feel like you have a blend and so what do you feel most often or what do you gravitate to is it the capricorn nature or do you have something in your chart that you hold in a special regard or notice having an effect on you um that's like, actually a good question yeah i'm um, curious with the connecting to other cultures actually i'm oh that's right we skipped I, that. also i don't know yeah i'm curious about what you're gonna say about the culture um, yeah yeah because you picked probably buddhism i connect Beautiful. to in a way story of buddha and how so do i he followed his path through yes. enlightenment. I loved um, it. I don't know, just always connected to... Yes. He's an empath, and he was like, why are you shooting this bird, brother? You know? And the Greek, got, Greek and, well, the yeah. Romans technically stole from the Greek. If True. you look at it, the statues, yep. that's why the art styles are so similar. Yep. Then they art took it over to Egypt. Yeah. Um, yep. But yeah, like, I, I don't know, it's always enjoyed Greek mythology and just the whole story of all the gods and goddesses. So. Yeah, I don't. I don't really do, like. I do not. I don't know if you do. I do not gravitate toward Renaissance or anything like that. I like that kind of time period. I just don't. I just. I don't know why. You know, I, Renaissance was just like a time of great ideas and stuff. And I just wasn't there. <laughs> in terms of like artworks and style and theme, yeah. it's just not for me. It's, it's not too, for me. I don't. Boring. Yeah, I don't gravitate to it. Okay, but what about the? Okay, that was perfect. So thanks for bringing us back to the culture because I. De I was so curious about that. I was that was beautiful what you said about the male and female, but I was curious about any specific. That's beautiful. Uh, what about the astrology placement? Um. Yes, the astrology one. Um. I connect <coughs> both to uh, Cancer mainly. Mm -hmm. um, my moon. Tell them your yeah. Tell them your placements. And then the Capricorn. Um. That's mainly what I connect to. But I feel like when I am in love. My Pisces, Venus yeah. in Pisces comes out more, and it's so fucking annoying. <laughs> um, because Venus in Pisces is almost like having a moon in Pisces, in my opinion. I'm not a professional yeah. astrologer, but man, you shine through sometimes where I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm seeing myself. I'm all, no, wake up. You don't yeah, want to be like yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's beautiful, beautiful. I guess my Scorpio, too, I sometimes... Uh, there are parts of my personalities come out that's like... Brooding, yeah. brooding, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 But the running, running, another running joke that we have is because I've met and talked to some other, you know, Capricorns who have cancer yeah. in their moon. Yes. For us, it's really like having a split personality. That's yes. the best way to describe it because yes. you got like tough, masculine, like father yep. Capricorn, you know, and then you have like the mother. Cancer, just, like, yeah, the most nurturing, the water I side forgive and, you. Yeah, <laughs> nurturing and soft and feminine and dainty and yes so and emotional and it's just like and you sure are Harry you're like a blend of both and it is a trip because that's why I said to you first off I go oh gosh you can understand <laughs> because I'm, I'm half water and earth it, it's like it really is like I connect to water signs don't get me wrong I feel like it's just where my emotional sensitivity comes from but yeah. it's like it's, it's annoying so right to <laughs> all the emotions and I look at my friends who have um water signs in their birth chart and i'm just like how the fuck do you guys do this like, <laughs> i'm fucking overwhelmed with my own goddamn self like thank you though for real thank you for that acknowledgement it's man too much. it's too much man me and the scorpio in this house i tell you what on on our worst day it's like come on <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot it's really deep that scorpio energy with you yeah yeah Oh, God, yeah. Gosh, and it's just, it's like, it's like a bitter, what do you say, say a bittersweet energy? You're like, ooh, I love the depth of it, but my God, can you go down yeah. and it just can be yeah. filled in, you know, feeling pain. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is a very, very, very trippy question and we've never talked about it, I don't think. So, do you know what sleep paralysis is? They call it sleep paralysis. Yeah. Um, uh, like when you like the people like, okay, my girlfriend had it a while back and then actually my son, Leo, uh, Marcus, he had it only once, but it tripped him out. It's where you wake up, but you are paralyzed almost, but you are totally conscious, but it feels sometimes my girlfriend said as if something is pushing you down. Um, I, I've explored this many times with her cause she was so freaked out. We came to the conclusion, open-minded. I don't know if it is uh, entity. I don't know if it is 
strictly from the body. I do not believe that it's strictly from the body. I feel like because of everything I've talked to with her, it happened over and over and over again with her. And she was just terrified. She went to doctors. She's very open-minded, but she's a Leo going, Hey, I got to figure this out. And it was petrifying for her. It's where you cannot move, but you are totally awake. And it's just, you know, this state and it lasts sometimes for 20 minutes. Like my son, he was, he never gets freaked out. He was like, mom, this happened to me. And I'm like, well, that's called what the medical doctors say, sleep paralysis. Um, so have you ever experienced that? Or do you know of anybody that who does? And, and if not, what is your maybe thoughts on what that could be potentially? Um, yeah, actually, the, sorry, I'm just going to, I'm going to get to my question real quick. Um, okay. my one last comment with the previous question. I know. Sorry, babe. I think, um, my, one of my Scorpio guy friends told me that, you know, part of the challenge is really being able to have a lot of discipline and control with emotions. So, yes. which I do, um, you know, having, being that Capricorn, when I get emotional, I do find that I have to have them pull my Capricorn out of me and just try to control the situation and reel that feelings, try to, try to reel it back in and try to maintain a level of... That's a beautiful point. And level -headed, ...level-headedness, but... Um, yeah. Hey, that's a beautiful point, just really quick, to say that. I think that that is beautiful because it ties into if we do plan or if we do have a uh, specific lessons to learn. Uh, some, I think that that w is so genius if you did plan that out or just the universe gave it to you because, yes, that is like the yin and yang. You can see where you need to balance each. That's that's yeah. very eloquent. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... It's, it's, it's a hard battle, though. Yeah. yeah, it's a very hard battle. Yes, for me, um, too. But regarding sleep paralysis, yes. actually, I think of, uh, Kendall Jenner um, <gasps> had sleep paralysis and I think she talked about it about her experiences a few times oh. in her on the on show with Keeping Up with the Kardashians I love that show I didn't I, see that episode girl we gotta I have to see that I love them I don't care what it is I don't ever judge people and I've been a hippie since I've been young I love that show I think it's great a lot of people will say their opinions but I love Kendall she's Scorpio as you know probably yeah, she's yeah, my she's favorite I love her so what I know she suffers of course like I had suffered and still do with the anxiety and controlling it but she had sleep paralysis oh ho ho yeah, she, apparently she deals with sleep paralysis. Um, wow. I don't know, like, too many details myself, like, from a scientific, like, health yeah. medical point of view, what yeah. probably causes it. Yeah. Um, I haven't experienced sleep paralysis myself. Thank God I haven't. Mom. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Thank God, because I would be pissed. That was terrifying, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, I've experienced similar, but more on a spiritual level than a health level. Like an astral travel or something, like an out-of-body experience, or...? Yeah. Okay. I would love for you to elaborate on that. Tell me because that is something I have not had. I have not had a complete out of body experience. I've had lucid dreams in which I can place myself. I believe it's a form of astral travel, but I know that it's a, like a, a very, very, I'm, I'm a little baby fry. So I, I would love to hear about your experience. I would not recommend it. It's a very strange feeling. I thought, yeah. Um, I think a lot of those times I was just like so deep into my dream and probably calm I don't think I remember having like a very stressful dream but just like just really deep into my dream and I remember still sleeping but I felt my soul kind of slowly float Separate? out of my body and just linger there for a while and interesting I literally felt my body my soul just like fall right back into my body okay wait did we talk about and that before because that, about that feeling when you're a kid or when you're falling asleep and you're right about to go to sleep and you feel like you're kind of falling through the bed and my theory is my my hunch is that that is where you are kind of detaching and going into a different state like an I've, astral body I've experienced that too before but I don't think I've had like an astral projection kind of thing but but like you know what I mean that yeah, falling feeling thing at home yeah like I've definitely experienced that it's a very strange feeling and it's just like that that point when you're like midair and falling down really hard. Yes, that's like you you kind of lose your breath. It's yes, a really weird, bizarre feeling. And yes, then, and it shocks right you. Then, yeah, like your spirit just like hits your body. And it goes and you poof. Fall right back in. Yes. I really jolt awake every time, and I'm just like. Ugh. Yep. You know what I think you that know, is? I think like, that's. Oh fuck! Like not again. <sighs> I know, and you know what I think that is? It's correlated to the same type of principle where the near death experiencers say when they are sucked back into their body. They explain that. They say it's kind of like a, a tunnel, like a, a vortex. It's just They explain that exact feeling. And the other day it dawned on me. I said, you know what? That is when the soul detaches from our physical body. And I believe that we do have those cords, metaphysical or whatever you want to call it, you know, these cords that tie you in until you're ready to ascend. That's my personal hunch or opinion or whatnot. It seems relevant. It's, it rings true. So, yes, that is neat that you have also thought that that feeling, that really quick, like, 
falling down. It, like, it feels like you're just falling, like, back, like, real quick, like, just so quickly. And I used to get it a lot more as a kid. Did you? Um, I don't... I don't know uh, why. Obviously, yeah, we're more sensitive. I don't so, like, that level of experience in a really long while. Okay. But that... probably, like, when I was, like, 19, like, early 20s okay. and living at home still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, my bedroom was also known to be, like, really haunted, so... Ooh. Uh, there was a male spirit that just kept attracting, trying to get my attention and stuff. I don't know what the fuck it was. Okay, it was... that's one of the questions. Have you ever seen an actual apparition, or tell me how that, that spirit or entity yeah. presented himself? Yeah, plenty of times. Okay, um, tell me, tell, tell us. With my own eyes, I've seen one, but what did it look I like? definitely felt it i heard it i heard the foot stomping yeah and again it's, 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 it's your dad it sounds like your dad's like walking down the hallway like done done gone. yeah um deliberate my, yeah my college dorm the uh-huh. first one that i moved into um is fucking haunted <laughs> like like all kind of things right like dude it's <laughs> yeah no it's it's, it's dead ass haunted yeah i'm usually the first one to wake up in the morning and at this time i was Middle of the night too, right? So I just woke up. I didn't okay. have my glasses. I'm so groggy and tired. And I was standing in front of the vanity, you know, washing my hands, brushing my teeth, whatever, minding my own business. Um, every other part of the house was still dark. And this tiny ghost, like from, uh, what's that old 90s movie? Uh, um, Casper? Or no? Casper, yeah. Okay. Was like <laughs> was Casper. that little? Yeah. Literally wow. just looks like Casper, minus okay. the eyeballs. Just... Interesting. Right past me, and I was like, "Okay, well, I'm fucking done." Do you think it was a? Could, do you think that we could go there with my whole alien experience? Do you think it could have been a another being from another dimension? It was that little, like those little. I don't know. People report when you do ayahuasca, little elves or goblins, or they say that there's short little grays. Do you think it could be something like no. that, or you you felt no. it was a? Okay. It was. Uh, for all I know, honestly, uh, looking back now, maybe um, we had two spirits in the house: the, the male one. Yeah. And the tiny ghost one or for all, for all <laughs> the know, tiny ghost we, one we'll yeah, call it casper no it's the same male spirit but he just yeah. manifested into a tiny ghost and just floated right True. past me it's i believe like, both are possible i know that i've heard a lot of accounts from especially um native americans where they say that there are shapeshifters that if you are in this realm that is maybe you don't want to send to a better place and you're in purgatory quote unquote you can shapeshift in order to either mess with somebody or you just do that's that's what they believe a lot of the yeah, yeah. So very yeah, interesting. So, um, and it wasn't just me. After a while, like my roommates started to experience it too. A lot of door slamming, and um, neither of the girls like were comfortable being alone in that apartment. So. Yeah, the energy, right? Oh, so the male yeah. just made you. Oh, uh, yep, yep. Okay, so yeah. do, have you ever been like um, touched or breathed on or anything like that from that entity? Yep. yep. Oh, Plenty creepy. Of time. Creepy. Yeah. Um. The the male spirit in my old house. Um. In my room. Um, as one of his methods and way to try to communicate, um, initially it always started off with things missing or things being yeah. misplaced, then to the knocking, and it was knocking on my closet doors. It sounded like from the inside, and he was Girl, knocking on my closet door. That is so legit. Um, yep. How come yeah, it's, it's so like, weird how it's the same things, right? The patterns, that exact same yeah. thing has happened. Yep, yep. Yeah. Interesting. And then, um, it escalated to, you know, when I'm sleeping, you know, he'll, I felt his hand press down on my belly. Oh my gosh. And I felt several times him trying to yank the covers slowly. Yep. Slowly yank the covers off of me. And I, like, one night had a little tug of war with him. And I was like, no, no, not today. No, not today, today, Satan. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. I'm like, no, no, no. Still internally panicking. But I was like, no, 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 not happening. That's not happening. No, that's what you have to be, right? We've talked about that so many times strong. And it's like. That's funny. Deanna has a purse that says but that. Yeah, not today. if you're weak and, you're, and this thing's there with you, it, it will easily destroy you. Oh, yeah. It'll manipulate <laughs> you. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I guess, like, after that, he got frustrated and or something. Because yeah. I remember one night, uh, the tap still haunts me, but I felt him tapping on my head, like, Ooh. three times. Ooh. Dude. Yeah, like, literally, again, just like, you know, like, it's, it felt like a dad's hand. Like, a dad's tapping on the head. Like, hey, wake up. Like, yeah. that's... And you know what, you know what you just said, which is, I don't know. No, you know what you just said is true is that, you know, you said, you know, you had to be strong and be like, no, no. The thing is, I think they're just like bad type of behavior individuals, like narcissists on this planet here. They, when they ascend, they want power and control. You don't give it to them. They will move on or stop messing with you as much because they don't, they don't get the energy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean. I definitely wouldn't recommend going as far as pulling out your Ouija board, but... Oh, hell no. You know, no, like, no. Definitely When's the last time you did that, girl? Girl? No, no. I don't, I'm completely against it. I am, too. Definitely, you 
you know, get get professional help if you have to, but know that you have to stand your ground. And yeah. Don't even if you're like do something simple like lighting an incense stick exactly. or smudging your plates. Like thank you. Anything that you're putting into it. Yes. Um, my girlfriend use that motion, the movement, the, the whatever you're doing, the power. So yes. you have to you have to stand your ground. It's scary, but you have yeah. to you have to fucking stand your ground, however the fuck it may be, and you yeah. have to tell them that. You're not allowed in the space. Yeah, and you're a sovereign person. Yeah, right you're sovereign soul. Uh, you know what is trippy about the Ouija board is because it just I go by obviously a lot of my intuitive guidance. I've known since I was little. Hey, dude, that is open circuit right there. And if you don't know what you're doing and you're going with yeah. no protection, hello, you're gonna be fooled yeah, or yeah, or just no, no. affected in a bad I, way. I always preach that to everyone I know. People look so at do me I, like girl. I'm crazy, but oh, I, I do too. not. It is absolutely true. You don't know what the fuck you're, you're getting. In your yeah. House. Teresa Caputo says that. Time, She's like, it's no. Evil. A lot of times yes. it's evil. Think about it. These low level petty negative spirits, right? They, they want see energy. You pulling out the Ouija board, what are they going to do? Oh, free Victim. asses into the world, world yep. and I'm going to fucking haunt Victim. her and start shit. Yes. Fuck no, fuck no, so no. I don't need that shit. And <laughs> we don't need it. No. Yeah, no. Like, everyone that I know who even, like, thought about messing around with it or have messed around with it, they regret they it. Invi- they basically invited either, like, an evil spirit or a demon into their house. Like, Ugh. Okay, do you think there is a difference in what it... it They were just like, no, I'm not doing this. And I said, no, don't don't fucking mess with that shit. Like, go to a professional, (laughs) like, get help, do what you gotta do. Because even professionals have hard times sometimes when it's so affected in homes, you know? What what is your opinion on poltergeists compared to demons compared to a a ghost? Do you have any difference of opinions? Are one worse than the other? Or, you know what I mean? I I don't... I think it's I just think demons are like the highest, like worst level that you can possibly ever deal with. Okay. Just knock on wood and just hope that none of us have to ever deal with it. Yes. I think our Lena Grande actually talked about our experience when no dealing way. with um, women. What do you know about she, that? I didn't know. I love her. She's a cancer, right? Yeah, she's. Uh, I like her music, but personality-wise, she's ooh, girl needs some help. <laughs> sorry, I'm <laughs> sorry. Hey, so you can say whatever you want, but you crack me up. I love I'm it because sorry. it's like. I, no, I, I love it. It's so funny. I'm a huge stand of her. I fucking love her music to death. I, and what she did with Manchester is just... What? I don't know that. But, oh, wait. Um, the the Saturday Night Live actor? No, that's different. Yeah, I, after her incident. Only a year after she went back yeah. to do performance. And that too for charity. Like, dude, I have PTSD. I can never fucking do that. Like, you know what? I only know about what you're talking about because my um, daughter told me because I, I just, I didn't know any of that until real recently where that guy, I guess he got suicidal because he was bullied online. What is his name? Her, uh, her ex-fiance before uh, Mac uh, Miller. Yeah. I forget his name, but anyway, I guess that he was getting bullied by the whole, not the beehive, that's uh, Beyonce's, but the whole... Uh, grande troop or whatever so okay wait what she's she's talked about the fact that she did get haunted by a quote-unquote demon not haunted but she's seen one oh, so she's she seen said one. she i think she and her team were just like at nighttime um driving by a cemetery or something Whoa. like that um and you know she was just like how does the world just chilling and hanging out whatever like just whatever you know just and then she took a couple photos and um she saw glowing eyes and one of the pictures it was not because of the flash yeah. and then she saw noticed that there were um bugs that started crawling inside the car creepy weird and so yeah she was immediately like oh hell no and she went she and wasn't on so, any kind of like ayahuasca no i'm just kidding i'm just a total stupid joke <laughs> i don't yeah, even know no, if she does I it think at that point like she knew the signs or whatever you want to yeah. call it immediately and said yeah. um something like i'm sorry for disturbing your peace and oh, good girl and just left well that's a good you know what luckily, round of applause um, <laughs> Happened, but she explained the place that she was was a very strong pivotal space. Oh, interesting. Um, that's known to be um, a portal or an opening. Yeah, like a like portal or opening. I, I think she said to hell, but I'm not sure. Don't interesting. Quote me on that. No, I don't. This is but just. It was, a, it was a very strong portal, and as you'd imagine, that that means a lot of energy and. For sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so intriguing to me. Just like, yeah, I'm sorry for disturbing your. Hey. Just noped out of there, and I'm like, yeah, that, that's what you do. On that note, girl, since we're so close, have you ever been to the Winchester Mystery House, which I feel that is a definite vortex there? Um, I really no, do. I don't ever want to. Because you should not go, because, no. <laughs> no, I just, I, like, look, I, I don't, I don't want to mess with that, and with the, spirits, you just never know. Yep, last Even time I went, it was 20. 
for all you know, they latched onto you and they followed you home, and now you have shit happening in your house. I don't need that crap. <laughs> That's one I of the people I'm a ghost show. I know it sounds dumb because a lot of people say it's just like a big place. Okay, no, well, like I don't, don't want to go. You in there. would feel it. You would feel it. Trust me. I was 20. I wasn't even this spiritually woken. Let me tell you. I knew that it was not just oh, it's haunted. No, no, no. There was something there that was very uh, thick, no, heavy. I don't need to be around that shit. Yeah, no I'm, way. I'm good. I'm gonna stick with my smudged and sense. Yes. So let's sticks. talk about that. What about these ghost hunters? My sister-in-law does on purpose is her big thing. Love you, Margie. She's a Leo. August 4th with Cancer Moon, by the way. You'd love her. She goes on purpose. I said, girl, what are you doing? She goes to these uh, notoriously haunted prisons and hotels, spends a night, and she'll go at 3 in the morning with her and her husband knocking on purpose, girl. I'm like, what are you doing? If I did that, I would have a gang of troops of bad souls all around me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, me too. I mean, considering I'm already someone who attracts yes. spirits, apparently, like, I don't, I literally do not, I cannot emphasize this enough. I do not need that shit. Right. I would never do that. But yeah, there, no, there's some people who are, you know, um, it's a fascination. Call, yeah, like, not fascination, like haunted enthusiasts. And yeah. Even if it's fake shit, they'll go after it for, just for the thrill of it. Yep. I never understand it because yeah. I've had my own experiences and that's not something. And I, I didn't ask for them. <laughs> yeah. fucking terrifying. Yes. Because it's like, in your house, you know something's there, but you can't fucking see it. Yes. And it's, it's terrifying. Oh, it's like okay. It's like your private space. That is a question then. On that note, do you believe in multiverse and or other dimensions that are simultaneously going on right now? For instance, maybe that's another dimension. We can't see it though because it's through time space or, uh, you know, string theory or some other dimension. Do you, do you believe in that? If you had asked me at any other time, I would say dead no, but I am slowly starting to believe it, but also because I recently had my own spiritual awakening myself. Yes, okay. Girl, I really do want to tell you I do. The way that you explained to me, like, what was going on and why I was experiencing it really just kind of made me go, oh, shit. But at the same time, I think sometimes, you know, there's a lot we don't know about our own fucking oceans. And there are massive parts of our entire universe and galaxies that we haven't explored yet. So Absolutely. And I I was was a healthy skeptic and I got shocked. I still am shocked to my core that I know for me that I know that there is something, a millions of things, obviously, because if I saw... 10 to 11 feet, you know, things that I thought were supposed to be aliens and they look like angels. I mean, it sounds nuts if I would have heard myself say this, you know what I mean? Like 20 years ago. So I know that this is the reason why, one of the reasons why I have to remain open minded. And a lot of people don't like that about me doing my healing practice because they're like, you don't have any core beliefs. I'm like, I do, but you know what? I always want to have a little room for adjustment because I had core beliefs back in 1996 when I was 18 years old and four completely sober, different people, an aunt and uncle, my best friend Virgo, who does not like that kind of crap. Can you imagine? And she never spoke no, about I it after that know. night. I wouldn't blame her, yeah. Oh, it was so, pe- so, you know, I mean, that really is, that was my beginning of my existential crisis. Like, oh shit, life is not what I had envisioned and been programmed or whatever. You know what I mean? So yeah, I do think I, for sure, I'm, I'm leaning toward the probability of both the soul contract and simultaneous, um, you know, they're, just like Einstein said, there's no time. It's relative to the observer. I think that it's time, space, continuum, and I, I can't conceptualize that yet because I'm not over there. But I feel that there, there, probably is other dimensions. That's just my opinion. Oh yeah. You know. I, I mean, I, I'm sure I'm gonna get pretty fucking shocked too when I yeah. learn about it myself. Yes. But I, I would, I would I'm here for you. Surprised if there are there are other dimensions. We can't yeah. be the only fucking living beings on this face of the earth. Oh, 100. percent There's still, if you read the articles now. That we're still discovering pieces of our past, like exactly. our children, we're still digging up shit. The polar ice caps, the common articles we've been reading, yep. because they've been melting. So yep. because they've been melting, a lot of the artifacts, like bones and like Viking, like uh, yes. I guess helmets and shards and stuff, even like yep. bones from like deer, deer horns, they're coming out into the sun and they're being exposed. So yep. archaeologists and a lot of scientists are scrambling to the places. Yes to capture yes. them and kind of get as much as they can. Out I of watch them all those shows. Them. Yeah. Oh, it fascinates them, but me. Mainly also so they don't get destroyed by yes. the sun because they've been yep. preserved under ice for all these years. They have so to remain they, that. Yes, yes. And that I, is that is fascinating. What about this one? Have you heard about the, the artifacts? For instance, this one in particular, they found literal legitimate Egyptian artifacts and into a tribe of Native Americans in, I think, Colorado. And it is, they found it buried. There's no way it dated back, et cetera, et cetera. So they profess like what their theory was, certain people's theory, not the mainstream scientists, that the Egyptians did come on their boats all the way over here, all the way over to, you know, all kind of different places. And so 
I always am interested in that, and I believe there's so much more than we would ever know. I really do. I believe there's a civilization, call it Atlantis or whatnot, but I believe that since they found Troy, and Plato wrote about it, that there's so many different possibilities, and I'm intrigued at the polar ice caps, and that's so sad that they're melting, obviously. Shout out to Mother Gaia, but that is something I've been following, and it fascinates me because there have been so many surprises up there. I'm like, whoa. You know, we don't know. We don't know. Um, I actually haven't heard of that article, but I've heard of similar articles where yes. they're finding, I think um, one of them was um, Asia, too, and there's we're still learning. Yes. That all the stuff that we've learned all our lives in history classes is, like, completely false. false because James we're false, yep. That you know, these, these people who, you know, were from somewhere else didn't yeah. actually just land in one country and suddenly not, they're not, like, yeah. this entire race, but it's because they've been, like, I, I guess, I global about their entire life, yeah. and they just kind of... Yeah. I mean, what about the simple yeah. fact that there's pyramids at the same time periods, but on the whole globe, and supposedly they weren't able to travel to each other? I mean, why would... It could be a conscious thing, but... There were pyramids in the Aztec civilization, the Egyptian. There's in China. There's pyramids that they're covering right now. Have you heard about that? They they look like mountains, but you know they they yeah, think that they're that pyramids. One. I haven't heard of that one. No. Oh, that's so intriguing. I'm like I'm so. If you talk about fascination, that is like me for my whole life. I just get so utterly intrigued about because I don't. You know, I hate to say the whole the word of misinformation but I don't like to be told hey you know what it's awesome we have missions in America and Columbus discovered America without telling us the you know the real side of everything and I mean my opinion is like hello you know it's genocide what we're preaching not to do now I just feel like they always they gave you little things of misinformation and that was one of them that you know civilization started only x amount of time you know in Samaria I think it's so far back I feel like um, the, um, the comment actually just made of Columbus. I know that's what they teach us in history, it's but bullshit. as you probably have learned, um, Columbus actually um, discovered America by accident. Yes, I know. He was trying to go to India, right? Was he trying to go the trade route? Yeah, he was actually supposed to be destined to go somewhere else, yeah. and he discovered America by accident. And he course, discovered some other people's home, is what he did. And then he tried to, you know, in my opinion, yeah. just I'm totally yeah, not a judgmental. Americans but. have been living here, so he met with the Native Americans yeah. and a different culture. And what do what do uh, colonizers and foreigners do when they go to a new land with different yeah. cultures? And Conquer. Yep. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad. And rape and pillage. Don't forget that. You know what I mean. So yeah, I don't care yeah, anymore yeah. about speaking on that. Like I used to be holding back because I healed as a practice. But I'm telling you, it's in me. It's always been in me. It's a passion. I believe that I need to speak out for the matriarchal. You know, the divine feminine, and be like, dude, that's not nurturing. That's not Cancer Moon style right there. That is just atrocity, really. You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, interesting. Do you have to? Do you have to go? If you ever have to go at a certain time, I feel I don't even have the the screen is up, so I don't have a timepiece. I don't know what time it is. So you can just if you need to go, um, what? Yeah, it's it's three right now. Okay. So Ooh. I'm gonna try to put on like my shirt and try to head out just so I get there early enough. Yeah, no, that's good. I absolutely think that you just stunned like anybody who hears this. I am totally and I always love talking to you. I'm serious right now. It is like so. It's an honor. I'm so glad that you did this. I know it recorded. It's gonna go up. I cannot thank you enough because I'm like I am anxious to ask like the next round of like questions because I don't know. I love your. Uh, different perspectives and I just love that I don't know it's just it's it's I'm not saying oh when you're spiritually aware you know you're it's the absolute truth but my uh vibes resonate with what you're saying you know for the most part I'm just saying it really is neat that you um, are able to relate and I appreciate that and I'm sure a lot of the people whoever hears maybe my two my two, my two views as Aaron the Capricorn be like oh your two views I'm like dude go suck a no I'm just kidding <laughs> But um, in any case, yeah, that's how that's how we are. We just I like, know. make fun of you a lot, but that's how we show. But it's care. love. I, I know. I gotta give yeah, more like shouts out to his positive. Like, that's kind of like how Scorpios give out tough love. Like, that's that's Very our true. Tough love. And that's why it's funny because my husband and then my dad, you know, Scorpio Capricorn. It's like there is this polarity of same same but different for sure. But there's something so beautiful when a Scorpio and Capricorn get together. I gotta say it. I'm telling you, I love it. I love that little opposite but compatible it's a it's a beautiful thing i think so anyways doll i will uh expect a text or i'll text you i cannot thank you enough i will get off of this and then get to downloading which will take forever but we'll post this and i totally hope you have a very nice rest of the what is it saturday i'm so lost <laughs> I don't even, it feels like a Friday. It's right? Like, Ever since the COVID thing, I'm like, I'm guys. Thing, so it's like, ugh, most of my day's gone. Now. Oh, girl, that's okay. You enlightened mine. I'm appreciative. And just, yeah, if you think of any kind of cool questions, maybe, that we could go back and forth on, I, I think that there's, like, just a, a beautiful plethora of information that you 
spark when when I asked you the question. So I totally enjoyed it. It was rad. Hera, thank you for your time, Hera. Take a round of applause. Woo! <laughs> bye, sweetheart. Call me. Call me, Miss Capricorn. Okay, bye-bye.